self educators <clears throat> anyway there was a section uh, called um, you know clerking in there and uh, they a, what? Cler clerking like the the English used to call their uh, bookkeepers clerks right yeah and anyway they, ex they explained in detail inland bills of exchange and foreign yep. bills of exchange exactly how they worked how they're how they're accepted and how they're endorsed and what is considered dishonor it was a real eye-opener that's a uh, harmsworth is it it's called harmsworth and then self hyphen educator if you search on the internet you'll find several places that have uh, scanned them from beginning to end it's also uncensored history for instance the um, st. Valentine's Mass Day massacre in uh, of the Huguenot in France um, the uh, right when was that Joe's the date of the massacre yep oh 1500 something wasn't it I don't recall the exact date but anyway, in, in the article, he describes the murderers as the Catholic mob. You will not find that type of statement in any current encyclopedia. See, an another thing, Vic, we found is that every time they establish a new covenant, um, <clears throat> when it is in, 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 in uh, honor and uh, adding to the original Talmud covenant, um, yeah. They burn and murder by fire a lot of people. What's the purpose of that? It's part of the curse. Uh, to 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 worship Moloch, um, uh, from where we get the word immolate. Right. On the Holocaust, the burnt offering of of animals. Um, so you you discover all these periods in history where uh, these events occur. And around that event, and because of that event, there is some major, major um, act that takes place. Yes. So, uh, for example, when the um, Sesta KV Act was introduced, which uh, introduced the legal concept of how the trust was to work, yes. uh, and we call it the E-State, yeah, the concept of E-State. Yep. Um, the concept of E-State is that um, the man or woman is effectively dead. Yeah, legally, um, you you can't have uh, a living thing uh, in a trust. It has to be dead. It's probate, right? Yeah, the, the corpus. Yep. Yeah. So so what the so, so what the registrar at Vital Statistics does is as soon as he does the birth certificate, he declares the baby dead. Unless and, unless her unless uh, that's why it's a notice of protest in blue. That's why. Birth certificates are in blue because it's saying, um, and, and it's also why the, the the birth certificate is usually not issued immediately uh, with the live birth record. It's issued sometime after because what they're doing is saying we haven't heard from the baby, uh, so we're writing a notice of protest and dishonour. And after seven years, the registrar can then say, well, I didn't hear from the baby. After seven years, the baby must be dead. That means any Sesta KV trust. Uh, is lawful uh, and the lien that is placed on the Sestica V Trust is lawful and then any money that is is uh, created from the maritime lien which is then um, approved monetized uh, maritime bills of exchange uh, can be issued right. and unlike um, unlike agricultural bills of exchange which we call commercial a, a, a maritime bill of exchange because the lien makes the acceptor already accept the lien once it's monetized the ecclesiastical nature of a maritime lien means that the bills of exchange cannot be refused it is it is actually a dishonor and uh, a criminal act to refuse a maritime bill of exchange under their system and now we know them as U.S. Federal Reserve notes. Yes. They're more powerful than gold. See, gold, people can haggle, but you can't haggle maritime bills of exchange. You have to accept them on face value. Right. So the reason they got rid of the gold standard was maritime bills of exchange are far, far better and far more useful than gold. Right. 
They're guaranteed by the lien. Yes. It's wild, well, isn't it? And who's holding the lien? Uh, the the trustee of the bankruptcy. So every country was bankrupted in '33 yep. by the biz. Um, the biz uh, was founded with 1.6 trillion dollars worth of gold. Yep. Uh, it's it's actually listed in plain sight. They tell everyone that it was founded with 1.6 trillion dollars worth of gold. They just say it was Swiss gold francs. Now, the Swiss have never minted 1.6 trillion worth of Swiss gold francs ever. Right. <laughs> What what they're saying is that the, the the total stores of gold of the Vatican, which is the largest private stores in the world, under underwrote the biz. Yeah? Yep. And and what they're not telling you is uh is they say that this gold came together from Germany, England and other places. Well, you know, these countries have never had that volume of gold and they never disclosed that they own that gold. It's the Vatican, but it was it was brought you know, into play through uh, a large group of private shareholders yes. that have a direct tie into um, the Vatican and remain the shareholders of the biz today. And you know, that I was aware, you know, that part I was aware of. You, were you aware of that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know and, who the and, parties are, but the, the one point five well, trillion dollars and. Well, the 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 the, the, the reserve banks are any members. Um, but the, the private shareholders, actually, they, they hide them in plain sight. You know who they are? They're the, the Knights of Malta. Okay. So the Knights of Malta is, a, is an, an order of the Catholic Church. It's, it's the most open order of the Catholic Church because it permits um, Protestants and uh, Jews. Not that I've seen any uh, Muslims in it, but I'm sure they'd even accept Muslims, right? <laughs> okay. Yep. And any head of state that comes on board becomes a Knight of Malta. Every FBI director has been a Knight of Malta. Every CIA director has been a Knight of Malta. Every treasurer has always been a Knight of Malta. Every president since Trum uh, since Roosevelt has been a Knight of Malta. Yeah? Right. It's yeah, a club. I, re I received an email uh, two or three weeks ago about all the, the BIS and... Uh the founders with the gold, if you will, and then uh, the, the president, so on and so forth, are required to be members. Yeah. yeah, that was that was me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I asked my friend who it was, and uh, he just said well, he chooses to remain anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's only because, well, you know, some things, the UK is so broad, it's very easy for people to say, you know, this fellow Frank is, you know, crazy or whatever, it, and I just thought, I just want the information to go out without that tag on it. Yep. But it is, it's all valid, you can all validate it. It's like, it's nothing in there that is untrue or, or you know, trying to establish a position that can't be validated. It, it's all fact, but um, it was just trying to establish that there was a solid underpinning to it. But the gold was a ruse. The gold just got everyone into a, a, a position of, bankruptcy control and then what the biz did was put these reserve banks in place as the trustees so the liens are the liens are held by the trustees so the federal reserve is the trustee of the multiple um timed bankrupted uh corporations of uh of the united states now every time there's a bankruptcy what they do is they roll the previous bankrupted corporation under a new fresh company, a new fresh corporation. Right. So it's, think of it as onions, yeah? Yep. So every time they do that, it makes it harder to get out of bankruptcy, right? Because if you're under multiple bankruptcies, you have to clear the first and the second and the third, right? It's like digging yep. a deeper hole. Yes. Yep. So in the case of America now, it's been bankrupted at least five times, I think, four or five times. So that means that, that, that we are buried... Um, five times into that corporation, yeah? Right. Yes. And every time that what they're doing is it's just another giant curse, massive curse, and all still managed by the uh, the trustees being the Fed Reserve. Um, right. Back to the biz. Yes. yes. Who's the federal, who is the uh, trustee in Canada? Or is Canada a member of the Federal Reserve? Uh, it would be it would be the reserve of uh, Canada would be the trustee of Canada. 
but you'd probably find that, well, a trustee is a trustee. I mean, you can still have a, a, a the, the tr a Canada is, is, is a trust, so um, the trustee is the Reserve Bank, but what you'd find is the Reserve Bank is treated a sub-branch of the Federal Reserve. Right. Yeah, we that. If, yeah, if, yeah. I re if I remember correctly, the Bank of Canada is wholly controlled by the Bank of England, and that's how they they pull in it off from this angle. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have anything in writing to that effect, but I figured that. Yeah, you know, you know, the Bank of England was nationalized in 1948, <clears throat> but all they did was the private shareholders had been in it before; they just moved their shares across. <laughs> so it's just a big ruse, eh? <laughs> yeah. In fact, um, the, my, my uh, um, associate in England that I've been talking to lately, he, he sent me images of uh, some of the uh, treasury bills that they created at the time of that nationalization, and uh, there was eight of them done for one million pounds apiece. Very interesting wow. stuff. I know they, na they nationalized the Bank of Canada in, in I believe, 1938-39. Mm, that one I hadn't heard before. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I've got uh, uh, the, the, the Committee on Commerce and Banking in Canada, which was started just before. It was all about uh, establishing a, 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 a government bank, the state bank, the Bank of Canada. And um, they actually, uh, there was a Mr. Jacques, who was the only guy in the whole meetings and the whole committee that had any common sense. But nevertheless, they adopted the, Ameri the American Federal Reserve way of doing banking. But then they just, for whatever reasons, they changed that three years later to, and nationalized it. Hmm. Well, what you what you'll find, Vic, is that if um, whenever a, a, a previously privately owned bank, particularly reserve bank, is nationalized, um, they'll abrogate some of those powers into a, either well either up the stream or sideways into another entity. So for example, I know that in Australia and other number of places, the the uh, what they call the public trustee has been introduced and uh, and given um, phenomenal powers. So it, it, it can well be the case that they slip the administration of the trusts to a separate body and then basically um, uh, nationalize the um, effectively the, the printing of money and that that side of it, which really is is you know no one seems to worry too much about, but the the value that underpins it is is either hidden away in a subsidiary or it's it's put into some other other entity. Right. Um, but uh, what what drives these? You know, Canada is is definitely maritime bills of exchange, as is Australia, and definitely as is the um, the uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve. But what we found is too that of all the maritime bills of exchange currencies, um, only one is given ecclesiastical superiority. And by ecclesiastical superiority, I mean a form of money that is still produced in a religious ceremony. Right. right? Yes. Now, the I said we you heard from us that blue is a, is a, is the colour of the ecclesiastical notices of dishonour, right? It's yep. a, it's a, it's also a colour that denotes the sea, the sea of souls, aqua, in fact, the colour, yes. the spiritual force. Now, when uh, they print US dollars, the paper they print it off is blue. It starts off as blue, right? I didn't know that. <clears throat> and then when they apply yellow to it, uh, it becomes green. It becomes the, um, uh, the yellow is the, is the symbol of the Venetians. The aqua is the symbol of the the sea, and when the yellow and the aqua are applied, um, you're talking about maritime, the the colour, and it's really cool. It's called aquamarine. Yeah. Yes. And then the red, the symbol of the red is back to the 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 Talmud covenant. The symbol of red, because it's the blood covenant. There's only ever been one blood covenant. Uh, we think it's you know, in Christianity, the, the sacrifice of Jesus. But the Talmud has always known that that is just them putting that up as a false false signal. The the, the, the covenant that they um, base it on is the covenant of the chosen people. You've heard that before, chosen people? Yes. Yep. Well, it's the chosen people of Moloch, right? 
<laughs> the chosen well, people of Satan, not the chosen <laughs> people of Divine. Right? 